Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern, Ned Reynolds in the studio on a Monday morning. The Chiefs victorious in Atlanta last night in Sunday Night Football. What would you see? A lot of griping and complaining from uh, the Chiefs' legions of fans. I don't hear it from you, but from others about the fact that they're not blowing teams away. Gang, they are winning. That's what counts. They have three wins against no losses, and I'll tell you why they are winning, too. Yeah, the offense may be a little bit out of sync, and I'll, I'll grant him that. In fact, Mahomes says as, as much. But this team has one factor over all the others that no team, no other teams that I've been able to see has, and that is the quickness, the speed that they have, especially on defense. And when you saw it come to the fore last night, here's Atlanta right down there in scoring territory, and a touchdown's probably going to win the game for them. But no, the Chiefs came up to the, they, they rose to the occasion, so to speak, and Nick Bolton comes crashing to the, the right. Somehow, some way, the Chiefs, <laughs> they almost seem to know what the other team is going to do. They've been able to decipher the stances that they're in and what the quarterback is going to call. And they saw a jet sweep to the near side, and indeed they were able to rush in, stop it, and thwart any kind of possibility that the Falcons had of winning that game. And it wasn't just that one time. They did it on all of them. Atlanta, for some reason, chose to run the ball and not throw it. Cousins is a fine passer. Heck, he took his team almost 100 yards in 60 seconds last week against Philadelphia, but he couldn't do that with the Chiefs because they are so doggone quick. So uh, I think the quickness factor and the fact that they tackle team tackle. It isn't individual tackling. They've got guys there, especially on those That's bubble spag, screens right. that are thrown. It's 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 Nagy who does this, and he does a very good job if, in fact, he will take the credit for the uh, defensive schemes that they're in. But that's what wins it for Kansas City. Right now, their offense isn't clicking, but it's still 3-0. and um, No, you haven't heard me complain about uh, the Chiefs not blowing out their opponents because what I've said since the beginning was they played down to their opponent. And last night was a good example of it. Did like their game plan. It does prove that this game is a game of attrition because early in the game, Atlanta loses two of her star frontmen that definitely had a big part of the defense's success last night. Had that not happened, it may have been a different situation. And again, going back to what I've said, the thing that scares me the most is the fact that they play down to their opponent, and that's going to burn you down the road eventually. It Again, I think... One of my biggest fears going into the regular season was the depth, especially on the defensive side of the ball. We do have some great guys, but who are the guys that are going to have to step in behind? And I thought they did pretty good last night, considering. Well, Atlanta, folks, is not one of the great teams in uh, football. Cousins is. Kirk Cousins is a fine quarterback, and they do have an occasional other player who will step to the fore. But uh, as a team, they're not one of the best still. It is a 22-17 victory, and Kansas City will take that. I do agree in some respects with your depth uh, questions, but that's how the Chiefs draft. They want they want depth on their bench. Now, is the depth tried and proven individuals? Well, that and that's uh, and that's an unknown until they get out there and play. But by the same token, I thought the running game was pretty good. The steel kid was tough. Mm-hmm. Samaj P. Ryan shows some resiliency as a running back. And the Chiefs only threw the ball, well, it was it 39 times last night, only got, what, uh, something like 217 yards passing. That's most un Mahomes like. But and he threw, uh, threw a couple of picks, and that didn't help that, uh, matters any at all. That's one pick, I guess, that he threw and had two touchdowns out of it. Mahomes is still the key factor. And as long as he can continue playing well, and he does continue to play very well, the Chiefs are going to be all right. Have the Chargers next week. That'll be a nice little test for them. But the Chargers probably will not have their quarterback, Herbert, in there. He uh, injured his ankle yesterday. And that uh, lends itself to the fact that Kansas City will possibly get a nice win out of that one, a confer, a division win. And that really is very important at this time of the year. Chiefs didn't have to be flashy last night. I mean, they held the ball for almost 31 minutes and three quarters. They had the time of possession down. And, that, and, that, and that'll tell you who's going to win the game. And really, Reed did a good job of letting his front on both sides battle it out and I think that's what uh, helped. It was very frustrating the few times I'd see Travis Kelsey wide open and it just seems that Mahomes wasn't seeing him or just didn't want to throw him the ball but I mean again um, like I said 
eventually you keep playing down to your opponents. The, uh, the Chargers game, that could be iffy, but that Saints game, first weekend of October, that's going to be a tough test. It will be, but New Orleans lost yesterday to Philadelphia 15-12. to They can be stopped. The Saints aren't the Saints are good, but they aren't great. Although, I'll tell you, they, they can do some tough things if they get on a roll. But still, we'll, we'll see. We'll see where it all ends up. So, I don't think last weekend um, was as bad as the weekend before as far as upsets. Two weeks ago, it was just crazy, the teams that won. But uh, last weekend, I think, or at least yesterday, rather, there was a little bit more consistency in the NFL. What, about you? what did you see? Well, are there really any upsets, it is any the NFL. surprises? You're very any, true. Any, very true. Anybody? Look at the Carolina Panthers. Mm-hmm. Uh, who, I thought they might go the season winless. <laughs> it, it tells you something about I, everyone saying, Carolina, you failed, Bryce Young, you failed. You put Andy Dalton in there, it makes it look like they should be winning games every weekend. Here's a guy from TCU who's been around in the NFL for years and comes up with a win. And here's Denver. Going to Tampa Bay. Had to explain Bo that. They, they have a rookie, yeah. Bo Nix, in there at quarterback, <laughs> and uh, they come up with a win and a big win over the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, I, I did get a chance to see a little bit of the Baltimore Ravens Dallas Cowboys game in Dallas, folks, is they had some problems on this team. Baltimore Ravens are a really good football team, needed to win the game, and they did, beating the Dallas Cowboys and rather substantially. And the Chargers losing to the Pittsburgh Steelers, of course, you also lost. Herbert at quarterback, that certainly didn't do uh, Los Angeles any good at all. That's who the Chiefs play next week. Two games coming up tonight, Washington-Cincinnati at Cincinnati and the Jacksonville Jaguars at the Buffalo Bills. That's two games on the schedule for this Monday night. Uh, It has not been a great week or week and a half, maybe two weeks to be a Royals fan, it just seems like the bottom's falling out for those that team, man. Can't get a hit. But the thing that's frustrating is the last, what, six, seven game losses have been within a run, two runs. That's the frustrating thing. And there is exactly what I don't I know, I'm man. not a soothsayer, but guys have seen it before. With young teams, when you get into the clutch in close games like that, the fact that you haven't been down that road in the past has a way of catching up with you. Now, the Chiefs will be- uh, Chiefs, the Royals will benefit from that next year. But uh, right now, they're in a pitch battle for that wild card berth. There are, two, there are actually three teams in the running for two positions. The Royals, of course, Detroit Tigers, and the Minnesota Twins. And right now, the Tigers and the Royals are in a virtual tie for the final two spots, but there's Minnesota only, what, a half a game back. Yeah. So any, this is a very important final week of the season coming up. But <laughs> can anything top the Chicago White Sox? This is absolutely one of the saddest stories I've ever seen. This is, folks, this is not an expansion team. This is the Chicago White Sox. They've been around since the turn of last century, the 20th century. They came into playing, I think, in 1901 when the modern baseball era began. And here they are. Sometime this week, probably, will break the all-time single-season losing record in baseball. They have 120 losses right now with a week to go, and that equals the record the New York Mets, who were an expansion team, set back in 1962. 120 losses. Holy smokes, what happened to this team? It's sad if you were from the south part of Chicago. I was hanging out with a guy who runs... ESPN Radio in St. Louis, and he says that Mo is gone after this year. No, he, well, he's already said he's going to step down, but it can't be too soon. <laughs> that, that's a personal opinion, folks. And I also am glad that uh, you didn't bring up my K-State Wildcats because that was a tough, tough. I did not finish the rest of that game. I went to bed Saturday night. That was a tough loss. Did exactly the same as I did because I had some chocolate chips on it on K-State. And when they, I'm sorry, man. They're losing to Brigham Young. I'm I, sorry. Come on, man. But man. it goes to show you again, just like with we were talking about the Royals and uh, you know the youth, the young team not having that experience at this point in the season. We got a great one of the most well recruited uh, quarterbacks for K State. He's a young kid. Goes into BYU. It's a very, very, very contentious atmosphere, and you can see where he's lo- have made some mistakes trying to force the ball and not having the experience. A little bit of experience always helps, and it will with Ohio State with Will Howard as their quarterback, who is formerly the Kansas State quarterback. Anyway, we had some good college uh, uh, football as well. The Bears got a win, a very uh, just a really good win over Tennessee. Martin thirty-one twenty-four. Missouri got a win. 
by the skin of their teeth over Vanderbilt when Vanderbilt missed a field goal that would have sent the game into overtime. 30-27 to was the final. Evangel and St. Mary's, their game was postponed because of lightning. And then you had the big race, the NASCAR race at Bristol, Tennessee, won by Kyle Larson, who is the defending NASCAR points champion. That really helped him out because he advances where four drivers were eliminated. Now, they'll, they'll continue to drive, but they can't win the points championship now. And then they are in Kansas City this weekend. They are right? indeed, correct. A lot of people I know going up for that one, Ned. You have a great day. Stay dry, and I will see you manana.